Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at these serverless retracts from Hobby King. Um, so called because they don't have a dedicated or separate servo to, to retract the landing gear of an aircraft. And as you know, uh, I'm not really into RC flying. Uh, I used to fly, but now I build earth movers. So why would I buy this? Well, because it looked interesting. Um, I wanted to see how it works. Um, always trying to uh, find new stuff that uh, might be uh, able to be repurposed for some other use in earth movers. So up here I have my uh, uh, servo tester. It's currently set to 2200 uh, microseconds and we're going to wind it down and we'll see that eventually the serverless starts moving and it and it arrives at its end stop and shuts off and if we continue further then we see that nothing happens so I'm going to now go uh, back into the other position and the moment that it starts moving I'm going to change uh, the uh, servo tester to a lower value and you will see that it immediately obeys this command Well, immediately was maybe a little bit optimistic, but uh, yes, we can see this device only has uh, two known positions, the end stops. Um, it obeys commands that are uh, happening while it is traveling from one end stop to the other, but there is no way to uh, control the exact position, and that makes sense. Of course, a retract system, typically, uh, the white wheel is either, uh, the landing gear is either pointing down or like this and then it's tucked away in the wing. So uh, now we're going to look inside and we'll see what happens there. We can already see a little bit here there is a threaded uh, shaft and a metal pin traveling on that shaft and it uh, that, sh that pin uh, reaches into a, into a guide in this plastic part and uh, that then rotates the whole thing. So, of course, we want to know a bit more than that. Especially interested in how the limit switches work. Um, might be electromechanical or maybe there's some current sensing going on. And we're in like Flynn. Okay. So that's interesting. Okay, so we do have a motor which is uh, quite a bit larger than the, the popular N20 motors, but it's uh, of similar shape, so it also has the, the flat. Um, flat housing. Uh, I see one gear, an intermediate shaft uh, with two gears and the output gear. Uh, on this gear uh, we have a uh, threaded rod. Um, seems to be M3 um, and on this on this uh, shaft we see a um, the pin nicely guided on this uh, injection mold plastic uh, we have uh, some brass inserts that was what threw me off but these brass inserts are for the mounting um, threads of of the retract uh, so this is also very nice um, you can see it here as well uh, the screws don't go into plastic uh, they have these brass inserts for added stability so uh, I'm a bit reluctant to take 
this apart, but uh, yeah, here we go. So, looks good. Might want to have a little bit more grease on here on the plastic, um, but mainly we're interested in this um, circuit board. So, uh, I'm not an electronics guy on this level, so what we do see here are the electromechanical limit switches. Uh, very tiny SMD surface mount. Um, and on the other side we have basically a very simple uh, speed controller. And uh, um, as we've seen, uh, the motors only driven or seems to be driven only at one speed uh, so that might well be some kind of electronic switch only. Um, it senses of course it has three lines um, so we have a supply we have ground supply and signal um, coming from our uh, receiver uh, and then uh, this uh, very simple speed controller uh, drives our motor in either direction and the uh, limit switches here probably with some diodes uh, create a classical uh, arrangement um, that uh, well uh, you can also recreate with uh, larger electromechanical switches um, yeah so overall that's how far I'm comfortable uh, taking with taking it apart um, uh, looks like a very nice very solid device um, despite the uh, the plastic um, housing as I said there are also some aluminium versions available um, if you want to have something even sturdier um, the central shaft here seems to be um, uh, well, well, certainly brass, uh, very solid, and it seems to be uh, injection molded into the piece. We see some yeah, it's definitely very solid and could be used as a mounting point for uh, uh, certainly for higher loads than uh, a few grams of aircraft landing gear so uh, if you are interested in using these for your projects uh, would be interesting or I would be interested in, in seeing what you come up with okay one thing I forgot to mention was um, we might be interested in having uh, having this converted to a servo ironically so what I mean by that is that we have uh, the position of this one being proportional to our um, transmitter uh, joystick position uh, so uh, ideally or it would be nice to keep these limit switches here but um, that's certainly beyond my soldering and uh, circuit board SMD technology abilities. Uh, but what we can do is that we would remove this circuit board and um, use these two wires. And what we do then with these two wires that I go directly to the to the motor would be that we use a circuit board uh, from a servo. Not this one. This one has burned out and is going to go into uh, electronics recycling but some uh, one quite like this um, and um, again we have a uh, uh, we have a uh, so basically what this is is a uh, simple speed controller but of course for servos uh, we need to have the feedback uh, the look uh, the position feedback from our servo and that's what these three uh, wires used to be connected to a potentiometer so if we for example use this uh, and would mount it uh, to here and then 
connect this or keep it connected if we are extracting that from a servo um, and uh, then uh, our motor wires sit here and here um, and there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube how you uh, disassemble servos and convert them to permanent uh, to 360 degrees and so on and so forth so basically you take this and so you combine the in innards of the servo with this and why would you why would you even think of doing that well uh, because uh, you might be looking for something uh, that you can easily attach here um, you might be uh, interested in something that is not back drivable so the uh, uh, the screw mechanism the, uh, uh, the threaded shaft here means that it's self-locking so if you want to uh, hold a load this one will not require any power whereas if you uh, have a have an operation, uh, 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 an application where you use a servo to hold a load, the servo will draw current and might even burn out. That's how the, ser the circuit board that you just saw has died. Um, so, yeah, um, would be a little bit of extra work um, to get it done. But uh, these uh, servos um, uh, are quite cheap, uh, especially if you if you do not intend to use uh, the rest of the servo, you can uh, buy one with plastic gears, um, or you can take one with uh, metal gears and uh, maybe use the re remains of that servo as a gear motor, um, as many people do. Um, in either way, in either case, it is a relatively uh, cheap alternative for a self-locking um, uh, servo if you are in need for something like that. Okay, and now I'm finally done. Thank you very much. Until next time.